Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. I'm very pleased today to have Janet Jackson as my guest instructor again. I have her on periodically, and I'm very happy that she is sharing her work and the work of others with me. Um, I certified Janet Jackson in one stroke um, years back. She's also Wilson Bickford certified instructor and also Grumbacher. So um, today we're using a limited palette, just four colors, ultramarine blue, white, alizarin crimson, and black. It's amazing um, what you can do with just a few colors, the attractive painting you can get. So I'm just going to uh, have Janet get started so we can get started on this beautiful painting. Thanks, Lucy. What we're going to do today is a painting that's an original composition. This painting was something that one of my students at Michael's down Tom's River and I put together. She wanted to do a painting of a wolf because her nephew wanted that for his birthday. So what I did was I went on a website that was a uh, royalty-free clip art website and I got this uh, template of a wolf. I've got a cutting machine that cuts paper and cuts vinyl. So what I did was made a template of a wolf. Normally it's black, but I, didn't, I was out of black today. Mm -hmm. So I made a template, and what we're going to do is stick that on the canvas. And what that allows us to do is paint over it so we don't have to worry about painting around it, okay? Mm -hmm. And you'll see how that works in a little while. The first thing I'm going to do is take the orange chalk, okay, and I'm going to make the... Um, the line, the horizon line. Now, the wolf is the most important thing, the, move, uh, the wolf and the moon. So I want to make sure that the ground is not too, too intrusive. So I'm going to make it kind of low, okay? And I'm going to make it a little bit uneven. You can see I have it going up on the top on each side, but you don't want it so that the wolf is sitting in a, in a hole, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have it up on one side and up on the other. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do, now we're going to take the wolf and stick him on the canvas. Okay. Now, the best way to do this is to take your side of your thumb and pull it off mm -hmm. the backing, okay? okay? Now, unfortunately, I am not that proficient in using my, uh, my cutting machine yet, so I wasn't able to get this part off. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is just stick that whole thing on here with the bottom of that underneath the horizon line that you painted, uh, that you drew on. Okay. okay, now as you do this, you have to remember that this guy is uh, howling at the moon, mm -hmm. so make sure wow. that you're in your mind's eye, you're thinking about where that moon should go. Okay, now what I want to do next is just paint the bottom of the canvas, which is going to be the uh, ground. And I'm just going to do that with some black and some blue, okay? okay? When you use black, you don't normally just use black. Most artists don't just take it out of the tube and use black because it's very dulling. So I'm going to put a little bit of black and a little bit of blue together. And the way I load that is by just pulling out from the pile. I don't make a big giant pile of paint and then decide I don't like it and throw it out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull a little bit of black out and a little bit of blue and come over here, OK? Mm -hmm. I tap it lightly. Mm -hmm. And that evenly distributes the paint throughout the bristles of the brush. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is just paint over here, OK? Now, you can see on my painting, that I have something that looks like foliage, and we're going to do that later, but right now all it is is going to be almost like painting a wall, just back and forth, okay. no problem. Now this is acrylic, and the studio lights are hot, so it is drying a little bit fast. Also, my canvas is old, so it is kind of dry. Okay. So what you want to do is if you have a problem with your paint moving, what you can do is put your brush in your water basin and then put it on your towel so it's not dripping all over you, <laughs> and then come up to your canvas and start painting. Very good. Okay? And we're, we're using a Wilson Bickford um, texture brush, which is uh, one of the two texture brushes that he has. And this happens to be the small one inch. The other one is the big two inch, which we probably could have used a two inch too since it's a big canvas today. But this is my favorite. Yep, I, I love this one. I you can tell by <laughs> how they look. This is Janet's favorite brush. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, They're so really... um, we're using the little one, and I like it okay. too. I'm also using Wilson's um, palette. 
Y yes, yep. Wilson has a giant a palette. Giant palette. <laughs> right. It is a giant palette. And I use that in my classes, his palette, and a lot of times, um, you know, when I'm just painting, it just seems a lot of times since we're standing on an angle when we're on the show, the palette, since we're both not that tall, our arms are not that long, so we seem to always either put it down or just use a smaller one for the show. But in, in reality, it's, it's a wonderful palette to have for anybody, really. Okay, next step in the process. Are you done? Yep, done. Okay, the next step in the process is to start on the sky. And the sky is a combination of black, ultramarine blue, uh, alizarin crimson, mm -hmm. and some white. And the alizarin crimson with the white sort of makes that pink color. Mm -hmm. What you've got to make sure of is during this whole process, there's no uh, recipe for it. But the one thing you have to remember is that behind the wolf is got to be the light. Mm -hmm. because that's going to make that silhouette of the wolf stand out. Mm -hmm. So using your one inch texture brush, what you're going to do is use some black and some blue again. Okay. Pull it out the way we've been doing it, okay? Mm -hmm. And then going across the top with the next stroke, okay? Now I might put a little bit more blue in that. That's kind of black, Okay. okay? And as you come down the canvas, what you're going to do is continue to add different color. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna put black across here, and then what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is add more of the ultramarine blue, okay? What you wanna make sure is you use a crisscross stroke so that it blends together. What you don't wanna have happen is have a stripe of black, a stripe of blue, a mm -hmm. stripe of pink. You want them to mix together, mm -hmm. all right? I'm so glad you have some pink in there. It's my favorite. Pink and purple is always my favorite colors. I love the way that um, wolf silhouette looks with that background color. Now, what I'm doing is adding a little white in there because remember that white and ultramarine blue make sort of a purple color, mm -hmm. which you like. So <laughs> these yes. are all just different colors in the sky. Okay, okay, so you went and you put a little bit of the... Uh, I did a little bit of ultramarine blue yeah. and a little bit of black. Um, okay, so you still uh, didn't get to that alizarin white. crimson yet. A little bit no, of white. No, no, no. I yet. didn't put any not white yet. yet. Okay. Okay. All right. So, as I say, this is your painting. You can make whatever mm -hmm. colors you want. I can't say that you make an inch of white, an inch of blue, an inch of uh, mm -hmm. black. It's, it's the way you like it, the way you want it. And okay. when you're using acrylics, of course, you can go over it as many times as you want to. I've been known to paint right over the whole thing and start all over again. <laughs> that <Yes>. I know. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of canvases that way. Uh huh. All right, now when I get to about this point, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start introducing some of the alizarin crimson. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to introduce a little bit of that. So I'm going to do some of the alizarin crimson with some of the white. Okay, and not even washing out the brush. I'm not, I'm just leaving nope. it dirty. Alizarin crimson. And white. And some white. Right, and I'm gonna start introducing that. Okay. And I'm going with the X stroke back up into what's above it so that it blends nicely. Okay. And you can see this is too dark, so I'm going to actually put some more white in it. Okay. Ooh. I just put my brush in a big pile of blue. I'm gonna come off to the side, wash that brush off, and go back again. Now see, I'm going right over the wolf with the lighter color, okay? And using those X strokes, you sort of have this windy look. Mm-hmm. You have to say windy. Windy, right. windy, windy it does. And I have the blue going across, and I'm gonna just leave it. Okay. Yeah. And you see the reason we're doing that is because when we rip that uh, template off of there, and we paint that uh, wolf in black, he will really stand out. Okay? Nice. I'm getting a lot okay. of purple since I had all that blue in there. Okay, you want to make sure that the sides of the painting are a little bit darker than the middle, but not too dark because you can see that we have trees coming up, mm -hmm. and because we have trees coming up, you don't want to make it too dark or that, that it would obscure the trees that we're trying to put in. You wouldn't okay. be able to see them. Now, over the, um, the wolf, yeah. you're just putting more white, right? White, more and, white, white and, and, and um, alizarin yeah. as mm -hmm. you go down, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yep. And that X stroke is what blends all the colors together. Oh, it's right? more of an X. Okay. Now I'm having, I'm going to really have to probably clean out my brush too because I have a lot of dirt in my brush. Some muddy, muddy colors. Yep. But I'm sort of liking them. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. How are we doing over there? Good, good. Okay. I think, I think, okay. good. Now, see how I just went right over the wolf? Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that there, what I would have to do is take that little bitty brush and try to paint over that. I mean, it basically would be impossible to do. Yes. Now, uh, sometimes people take a, uh, they trace it on. I think we've done that in some yep, of your classes. Yeah, we have done that. Yep. We trace it on, and then what we do is put some masking tape and then use a um, X-Acto knife to cut it out. But uh, I tell you, when you got a, a big class, oh, I, yeah. I'm not happy handing out those X-Acto knives yes, to some people. Yes, yes, so. and it does it does yeah. take up quite a bit of time oh, that you yeah. could be painting with. Yep. I think rather and than I've you actually know. cut yep. right through with the X-Acto knife right through the canvas. Yes, so. if you're using a wrapped canvas, it yeah. doesn't have yep. like this with the board. And yep. today we're both using 16 by 20 canvases. Right. However, Janet has a wrapped canvas, and and that's very easy to go through with the X-Acto knife. The board, of course, you don't have to worry about. Okay. Now you could play with this forever, yep. okay? You play with it until you get it to look the way you want it to. Mm-hmm. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the stars. And the way you do the stars is with a toothbrush, okay? And what we do is pull out a puddle of white paint, and then we use a toothbrush with enough water on it, and using the toothbrush and going toward the canvas, which we call the target, what mm -hmm. we're going to do is use your, t uh, uh, your uh, index finger pull along the bristles and that will give you your stars. The important thing is to make sure you have the right consistency. If you have too much water on your brush, what's going to happen is that you're going to have big blobs of paint coming out on your canvas. If you don't have enough water, you're going to have little pinpricks. Mm -hmm. Now, give me the choice, I would do the pinpricks, <laughs> okay, <laughs> then the blo blobs of paint. Right. You can always take uh, you can always put more paint on, but you can't take it off very easily. What I tell my students, too, is to try it on a piece of paper before they do it, okay? So what you do is get the toothbrush wet. You go like this to load it, okay? And if we were in class, what I would tell people to do is try it on a piece of paper first to make sure it comes out right. Okay, I need a little bit more water on there. Okay, all right, so now what you're going to do is just go close to your target so you're not spraying mm -hmm. the whole world and keep moving. As you put these stars on, keep moving. And see how my finger is just pulling back. I don't want to do this because I don't want to get loose. <laughs> but you pull back like that, okay? So just go like this. And you're putting this all over? Whoa. Yep, thank goodness you put that uh, plastic down. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, <laughs> now you may find that when you're doing this, even though you're holding it as close to the target, as close to the canvas as you can, what happens sometimes is you're going to get these white stars or white snowflakes in areas that you don't necessarily want them to be. So, like in this case, I'm getting some down here. Oh, and I did it down there on purpose, so okay. we're not doing it down there on purpose. No. <laughs> okay. These are stars. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just take my black and go over that, and that will fix that. Okay, I'm going to fix okay. mine too. Okay, next step in the process is to make this foliage look. Like I said before, we're going to make the foliage look down there. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is take the one inch texture brush again. Okay. You can tell it's my favorite brush. Yep. I use it for everything. Great. Load it with black and some of the ultramarine blue. Okay. Tap it out to splay open the bristles. Okay. And what we're going to do is just go across in varying heights to make 
this look like foliage. Now mine's a little dark over there. So if it's a little, mm. mine's pretty dark. So should I add a little bit? I would. You add know a what? little white. Yeah, or I would I would lighten this up if I had the time. Okay. This is a little too dark over okay, there. Okay, so me. I'm just going to make the trees yeah. a little lighter then. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Great. All right. So this goes under this guy's feet. Okay. And again, make sure it's not straight up and down. You want to go some this way, some this way. You want to make sure that the, uh, the direction of your stroke is not always the same, okay? All right, different heights, different <coughs> widths yes, of, the little, of the little bushes and all. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it sort of looks like, uh -huh. like that. Good. Okay. Great. Okay. And we can just smooth out this bottom a little, or that yeah. doesn't matter. We're not it putting anything matter. else on there, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, now, the next thing we're going to do is, I'm before we do the trees, I'm actually going to do the moon, because if we place the moon, then we know where our trees can go, okay? In this painting, I didn't put any leaves on the trees, but I think we're probably going to have enough time today to put some leaves on the trees. Okay. So, I have a dauber, but you're going to do yours I'm going to show how to do it with the square I brush. can't do freehand, so I'm going <laughs> to use the dauber. I'm going to put it in the white paint. I'm going to make sure I have enough on there. Now, the thing I have to watch out for is I know that this dauber was just washed. Mm -hmm. And if I press too hard on the canvas, guess what's going to happen? Because this is just foam rubber. And that foam rubber, unless you really dry it, is wet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, his, you can see where his face is going. So I'm going to put it about here, but not pushing too hard, and then going to pull off. Now. Right. I can make that whiter if I want to, but I may not, I may, may like it the way it is. Okay, so how I'm going to do the moon is I'm taking a flat brush. Um, I think this is a number 12 flat brush, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm just taking some white and I'm making a nice chisel, chisel edge of the brush. And again, listening to what Janet just said, if he's looking up at the moon this way, there's his eye, I'm going to just place it. Let me see if I can move a little higher. I see a little bit of a shadow. I'm just going to push down and I'm going to make one turn of the brush. Now I'm doing it on an angle so I can't tell if it's straight, but that's okay. I can come in on the other side and I can make another turn. Now you can do a few turns until you get your moon straight, okay? So I would have to literally stand right directly in front of it to get my moon straight. So for now, I'm just going to leave it, otherwise my moon's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm just going to leave it for now and then I can come back in and fix it up in a little while and just make it rounder. But that's all you have to do is just push the brush around and you can get a circle, okay? So that's always a good way to do it too, in case you don't have one of those doppers. Good, good. All righty. All right, very good. The next thing we're going to do is create the trees. We have trees on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. The painting I did after this, I did trees on the left-hand side, too. Let's just see how much time we have. Okay. Because I'm dark over here, what I'm going to do is make a lighter gray, uh, than I would normally make. Okay. okay. So you're going to do a little gray? Yep. I'm, I'm in between. Now, you, you can see they go off the canvas. Mm -hmm. You have two ways of doing this. You can either go from the bottom to the top or you can go from the top to the bottom, okay. whatever works the best for you. And Janet's <clears throat> using a, uh, a script liner. I'm yes. going to try it with the flat brush. And it's funny because when I first started teaching Janet years back, she hated that script liner. Now she's yeah. proficient at the script well, liner. I'm not and sure she about that. Uh, yes, you are proficient at it. She doesn't want to give herself some credit there. All yeah. right, so I'm right. going to do the same thing. Right. And just so you're just making some trees coming down. Yes, yes, just a whole bunch of them. And they're coming into the grass, into okay. the land. Yep. So let me see what color yeah. I get, and I can change the color a little. I may just add a little bit more white there. I think because my uh, canvas is so big that I will use the uh, flat too. Okay, so I'm just adding a little more white too. Yeah, yeah I think since it's a big canvas, yep. it might be easier with the, um, the flat brush. Okay. And you're making them different, um, just different widths and just kind of pulling Absolutely. them down. Absolutely. You don't want them to be too symmetrical. So again, I want to try to do an uneven amount. Yep. So I have one, two, three, four. So I'll, maybe I'll do uh, seven. Just have them come Make in. sure they're not too straight like mine are. Okay. I'm gonna, okay. Yep, mine, I'm are gonna, almost I'm gonna, mine almost have an equal distance between them and you don't want that. You want it to be... Um, yeah, much more generic. All right, so okay. I'm going to push a little on my brush then, yeah. since Janice said not to make them straight. So I'm pushing and just turning it a little. See the difference between a straight one and then I pushed and turned a little bit to get it a little crooked, which is true, which is more like a 
a regular tree. Okay. I have six here, so I'm going to come in and put another one. I'll do the same thing. I'm going to push it, push it, push it all the way down there to the bottom. Okay, so now we have different widths, different colors, not different colors, different values of gray there. Okay, while we're on this side, why don't we do this? Is using your script liner because okay. we're going to use, we're going to make smaller branches now. Okay. Using your script liner, what I want you to do is make some branches off of that main trunk. Okay. Now, you know that when you use a script liner, what you have to do is make sure you have a lot of water on it mm -hmm. because the script liner is a very delicate little brush and it has to be loaded correctly. When you load the brush correctly, the paint should come off as if it were. Uh, milk or if it were uh, ink. Okay, mm -hmm. you should be able to uh, print your name of it, sign your name of it. Okay. Okay, so we're going to make some branches coming off of these trees. And these branches are going to serve as a road map for where we're going to put those um, leaves that we talked about. The leaves that I didn't have an opportunity to put on here, we're going to do it here. Okay. okay. And we'll just start on this one side. Okay. All right. Now, when you make branches too, you've got to remember that they sh they shouldn't be real straight. Branches should. If you've got a shaky hand, that's the best <laughs> the best painter to make uh, branches. <laughs> they can't be real straight, and they've also got to be uh, big enough to support the trunk of the tree. Okay. Don't have them real short. Have them a little bit bigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. One right. thing I like to do, Janet, is when I have a focal point, which would be here, the center area. Yeah. What you can do for the viewer to um, to even focus more on that focal point, so to say, um, is you can draw the eye in to the focal point with these by aiming one at the moon and at the wolf. So if I right. aim one in a little bit, we can aim it right at it. And this way, it kind of even draws it in. I have a little bit too much white on there, so I'll go back and I'll go over that with gray. But I just wanted to show you, it's always a nice idea to, you know, kind of aim it in when you have a moon or something else. And it kind of moves your eye that way. So we have about five minutes left, Dan, and I'm okay. sure you can, you can do a lot more in five minutes. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to peeling off that wolf, too. Oh, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's just do some leaves over here, then we'll peel okay. him off, and then we'll move on if we have more time, okay? Okay, good. All right, so what we're going to do is some leaves over here. We're going to do the blue-black mixture that uh -huh. we normally use. We're going to use the one-inch texture brush. Ultramarine and then blue, add black, some white. and a little okay. bit of white, okay. What I'm making is a silvery gray color. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So I'm tapping the black and the white together. Tapping? I'm tapping it open on my palette. Okay. It almost gives a lacy look on your palette, and mm -hmm. that means there's texture on the brush. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that there. And you then when you do to... that, all you're going to do is do some leaves on the trees. Now remember, again, just like anything else, you don't want them symmetrical. What you want to do is turn your hand in different directions. Okay. And this, to me, is showing that this tree is being lit by the moon in certain places, OK? Now, on this one, I did some highlight on this left-hand side. Mm -hmm. The other one that I did, I actually made the trees and did the same thing so it encapsulated the wolf. Mm -hmm. But it's your painting. You can do any way you want to. Now, I made mine a little too gray, and I heard you say how it should be like a little highlight. So I actually am just going back in, sure. and I just whitened up my gray a little bit. That's perfect. And I made it a little bit brighter. Yep. Absolutely. There we go. OK. Good. All right. Let's get that wolf off of there. OK. OK? Yep. All right. And I'm just saying, if, if I were to keep moving with this, I would actually put a little more pink in here. OK? It's difficult oh, to more? do from the side. Yeah. yeah. But I would do a little more pink. Okay. All right, let's rip him off. All right, there yep. he is. Ouch. There he is. Okay. Now see how easy that is? Great. All you have to do now is take a little brush and paint him in black. Okay. If we would have not had that template, it would have been almost impossible to do that. Mm -hmm. So I am going to use a little round brush. Okay, I have. I just happen to have a filbert here. Okay, well why don't you use that. And, we'll see and again, that the black and the blue. Okay. Oh, and I didn't use the blue. 
I keep forgetting, which is such a great tip to add some of that blue because it really does change it a and little. And this is just called coloring book paint. This is called just, it's just painting. Staying in, in the yep, lines. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> which I'm not, I'm not good at. Oh, no? Not no. going to stain mm -mm. in the lines? <laughs> Well, I'm painting on, a, on pretty an, a much of an extreme angle here, so we'll see how I do. And I can see I went out of there, and my, my wolf is going to be getting a big belly now because <laughs> I just <laughs> went over there. But um, I think everybody's getting the idea yeah. of this, though. And you see down here where I couldn't cut that off on the, on the uh, uh -huh, paper uh -huh. cutter? All we're going to do is take your one-inch texture brush with your black and your blue okay. and go over that. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Wow. So just That's to make it look the, like some, some grasses yeah, or... Yeah, yep. Okay. Gotcha. All right. You don't have to worry about that. All you have to do so is go So just kind over. of... Just go over it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Over his feet and all. Right. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. okay. Gotcha. I mean, someday I'll learn how to use that thing so I can cut it uh -huh, properly. Yeah. <laughs> he did really well with this. <laughs> I see where, where that is. Okay. I'm just kind of, yeah, and we can even put some texture down in the bottom. I yes. saw that you, on your original there, I saw you had a little bit more texture down here. Yeah, I did. And I yeah. like the way that looks. That's okay. I'm just kind of whipping just, some out here. Just, just some white on the brush. Yep, I had some gray on there, so I'm just kind of going in there just to fill it in and um, give that a little more texture. That's wonderful. All my students know this is the part I hate. I hate doing this. Oh, I, let, I let everybody else do it, and I don't do this part. Well, the thing is, I'm sure in the couple minutes that we have left, his tail just got bigger. <laughs> um, okay, I just. Uh, of course, everybody at home will take their time. Yes. The object of this, um, the object of this whole show, is to get a lesson to you, so you can at least try to start. So you can learn a little bit about the. Um, the canvas and the paints and the brushes, and um, so you can get started, okay? You can always uh, contact us. We're both available on the internet, of course, at any time. And I think I kind of got mine in there after yeah, all Yeah, I think I'm done, it. too. Yeah, I think I missed his nose. Your nose comes up a little more, so I can just kind of, oh, it's getting bigger and bigger, his nose, okay. So uh, I guess we can name this one Pinocchio, uh, as his nose keeps getting bigger. <laughs> There okay. we go. And All right. Very Something good. like this. Now, the way I would yes. fix this, the way I would change this up, mm -hmm. adjust it, is I would make this pinker in front of here. Mm -hmm. I would put more stars in here. I would actually, on that left-hand side, I would have put trees, or if not trees, what I would do is some highlights. Mm -hmm. And the way we did the highlights every place else, we would do over here. So we would just do some, you know, some highlights over here. Okay. To Let's pick see how up. How you're doing some, that? Oh, I see. Yeah. Just kind of. Right. Just to give it some in a some little oomph. Bit here, a little. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. All right. Yes, very nice. Can even go back. Put a little more here. I always have a habit of overdoing, but I do like the idea of even putting more stars. And you see, I have white down here too. You can go on here. Oh, I, mean, I see. You can you do to bring it out a little bit more in here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is yep. very nice way to add a little more detail, and right. it shows that that moon is shining down. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Wow, that's great. Okay, so Janet, this is a great, great painting that you guys designed, and I appreciate you coming on the show to. Um, to teach me to do it. No, no problem. Thank you no again problem. for coming. I hope you'll come back again. I sometime. will. Sometime. <laughs> Thank you again. Okay. So we'll just do a little bit of uh, additions on here, and I hope that uh, everybody will come back and take a look at all the other shows um, that I have, and uh, write to me, and uh, come see me on the internet. Thanks again for viewing.